I'm attracted to how Asian men look. That does not mean I exclusively only date Asian men. My last three boyfriends happen to be Asian, but before that, most of my boyfriends have actually been black. I did a video about this back in December, and then people were like, It's the fetishizing for me, sis. It's the seeking validation for me, though. And I'm again, I'm not trying to say it's all of y'all, but it's a lot of black men. When black men would ask me what my race is or my ethnicity or my background, they always have these weird ways of asking you what you are or what your race is without just saying it. These black men, when they would find out that I'm not like biracial or Latina or Indian or whatever they thought I was, they would unmatch me. Oh, he needs God. some milk! What's up idols, it's Cece Lesson 3, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought it would be relevant to talk about something that I've talked about many times on my channel before, giving my current updated relationship status. And that topic is interracial relationships, fetishes versus preferences, all that good stuff. Now a few months ago, I did a part one of this, a preference versus a fetish. And a lot of people asked me to do a part two and to kind of update it and to keep it going a little bit. And for those who don't know, I have a new boyfriend. We've been dating for about a month. So far, so great. He is Asian, I am black, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. These are my peoples. So for those who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can click through any video, through any topic, and you can expand on some hobbies, interests, whether it's work-related, whether it's hobby-related, whether it's something you wanna get into, more like creative writing. If you wanna get into vlogging, there's videography, there's cinematography, photography, there's cooking, there's Japanese, there's Korean, there's different languages you can learn. It's easy for you to take notes, it's easy for you to go at your own pace. I've been using it recently to practice Japanese and Korean because that's what I'm trying to work on for myself. Introduction to Japanese They help personalize what you're interested in so they can put you in the right niche and help you get on the right course to what you want to perfect and work on and learn more about. For those who are interested, if you click the link in the description box below, the first 1,000 people to click the link will get free access to Skillshare for a whole month. Before it used to be two weeks, now it's a month, so y'all need to hop on that while you can. But it's really, really convenient and super handy, so if you guys are interested, check out the link in the description box below because I've been using it for almost a year now. All right, let's get into the video. So yeah, like I said, um, I talked about this fetish versus preference thing back in, I think, June or July. People were asking me to do a part two and kind of talk about it more. And in the past, like since I've had my YouTube channel, I'm only on my second relationship. Usually when I talk about these situations, I'm single. <laughs> so now that I am currently in a relationship, I figured I could kind of talk about that a little bit more here. On my channel, I'm really lucky because most people are so sweet and so supportive and it just, it's overwhelming sometimes. Like even when my mom reads the comments, my dad, he's like, yo, these people got your back. I'm so used to the troll and the person online who just doesn't have anything better to do. But it's really nice to see people go out of their way to be nice and supportive. It's a good feeling, you know? So that being said, <laughs> while most people were really supportive about having my boyfriend in these vlogs and kind of seeing him and talking with him and the Q&A live stream sort of thing that we did. We'll probably do more like that if y'all want because that was a rainy, messy vlog, unplanned. There were, of course, the, the negative comments and people make assumptions based on who you choose to be with and I just, I never understood that. So just gonna kind of go through and disclaim, debunk, analyze and talk about some of the main points I'm used to getting throughout the history of my life when I date. First of all, I think the main thing that kind of goes like universal regardless of race, gender, whatever, is people assume that when you want to be in a relationship it's because you're insecure or because you don't love yourself so you want to have someone else love you. I don't see it that way. Like for me personally, I don't see anything wrong with wanting to be in a relationship or wanting to be in love or dating someone. I do fully agree that you need to focus on yourself first. You need to be content with who you are and you need to appreciate and love and live with yourself first before you can even think about giving energy to someone else. That being said, for me, I kind of had that epiphany of self-love moment. I remember it quite vividly. It was like the end of 2019, right before the pandemic and I was so optimistic about what life was gonna be like in 2020. And what about it? I feel like if you look like me, you'd be obsessed with yourself too, no? I'm kidding. I wish I was self-obsessed. That would have saved me a lot of energy, a lot of time, would have saved my parents a lot of money. Do you know how expensive eating disorder treatment is? Not cheap. 
I don't understand what this generation's obsession with self-deprecation is. And I'm not shitting on my generation because I'm quite literally part of the problem. I'm not self-obsessed, but I sure do wish I was. It's okay to like yourself. It's okay to like who you are as a human being. I don't understand why that's being written off as like a bad thing now. You're the only person that has to spend 100% of your life with you. You might as well like yourself, or at least try to. And the thing is, I can't win. Anytime I've ever expressed on the internet that I have any insecurity, that I don't like any single part of myself, I'm told that I'm fishing for compliments, that I'm pretty and that I know that I'm pretty. But then when I'm confident, when I say that I think that I'm smart or that I think that I'm kind or that I think that I'm compassionate or even that I think I'm pretty, I'm told that I'm self-obsessed, I'm full of myself, I'm cocky, I'm conceited. The only person that would ever comment this is somebody that truly hates themselves. So what's up? Let's talk about it. My DMs are always open. I don't know, something happened to me that year where I just kind of felt fully content and happy with who I am. I appreciate who I am, I love who I am. And I felt like, okay, now I have room to love somebody else. But for those who don't know, I've been single since November of 2018. Like a lot of people, you know, even DM'd me saying like, I wanted a boyfriend just for the sake of having a boyfriend or oh, she wants to be in a relationship so bad. It's like, if I really just wanted to be in a relationship just to say I have a boyfriend or just to say that I'm in a relationship, I could have just picked somebody. Now more specifically into my pigment, <laughs> being a black girl, I noticed this universal trend, like this just happens, like it's like an automatic thing. You see it all over TikTok, you see it in YouTube comments, you see it in Instagram comments. Whenever a black woman dates outside her race, people automatically assume it's one of the following. Self-hate, seeking validation, desperation, or having a fetish. It's so funny to me because whenever a black girl is drooling, fantasizing, foaming at the mouth, if you will, over another black man. No one ever calls it a fetish or seeking validation or some sort of uh, self-hate thing. But as soon as it's outside of your race, that's automatically what it jumps to and I don't understand that. Like not for nothing, if y'all follow me on Instagram, I constantly drool over The Weeknd, Trevor Noah, Michael B. Jordan before he was Michael B. Taken. Like I, <laughs> I'm not over that yet if you can tell. I like Sterling from Ridiculousness. I like Lakeith Stanfield. He has such a soothing voice. I've seen many illnesses, but nothing like this. Like I like what I like. I'm getting to the main point of this video because this is kind of like a loose part two of the fetish versus preference type of thing that we talked about a few months ago. People in the comments of that video, the ones who kind of didn't understand what I was trying to say, a preference does not mean exclusive, you know what I mean? If you have a preference, it does not mean that you exclude or disregard everything else. For example, I love blue. Blue is my favorite color. I'm blue. But that does not mean if I see a purple shirt, I'm not gonna get it because it's not blue. Like you have a preference, that doesn't mean like, oh man, that shirt is great, but it's purple, it's not blue, I can't. A lot of people in that video were saying, oh, it should be about who the person is, not what they look like. Duh, but you're attracted to what you see first before you get to know the person, if that makes sense. Having a preference does not mean you're exclusively attracted to this thing. If you prefer tacos, that doesn't mean you're not gonna also enjoy a hamburger. I am attracted to how Asian men look. That does not mean I exclusively only date Asian men. My last three boyfriends happen to be Asian, but before that, most of my boyfriends have actually been black. I did a video about this back in December, and then people were like, it's the fetishizing for me, sis. It's the seeking validation for me, though. This is just a rant. I'm just getting stuff out there, I guess. I don't know why people assume that who you date is who you want to be. You know, a lot of the times, opposites really do attract. Yes, yeah, science. Just because you want to date someone who's tall doesn't mean you wish you were taller. What you're attracted to does not necessarily have anything to do with how you see yourself or what you like or don't like about yourself. I don't know how that really happens. Like the main thing I noticed in the comments of that last video is people kind of conflated preference and fetish together to mean like the same thing. I, I don't know how that happened. I see it as like, you know, having a favorite color or a favorite food. Like for example, I love seafood. Oh my god, I love seafood. I prefer seafood, but that doesn't mean I only eat seafood. Everyone's personal experiences affects them differently, you know what I mean? It's weird. Okay, so like in high school, I used to, I was a Disney Channel kid. All I watched was fucking Disney Channel, and I used to really, really love white boys. Even though all my boyfriends were black in high school. In college is when I got more like diverse with my life, when it was just kind of like... Taste the rainbow. I went to Rutgers University, a very, very diverse campus, which was very, very nice. Tons of eye candy from all over the world. And for example, I'm not gonna say who because I'm not trying to out anybody, but in my Discord chat, like I have a Discord chat for my channel members, and a girl DM'd me and she is in a relationship with a non-black man. She's a black girl in a relationship with a non-black man, and she's starting up a YouTube channel, 
and she said that she wants to like vlog their you know couple vlogs day-to-day -day life type of vlogs with her her other her significant other and she was nervous for the backlash she would get even though this is something she really really wanted to do she says she really wants to just get out there and they love to be together and smile together do activities together they like to edit and stuff and she was worried about the backlash she would get because she's a black girl in a relationship with a not black man and that really made me sad. I told her, you know, I don't want to sound cliche, but do what makes you happy because you can't please everybody. Like that is something I gave up in like 2018. You can't make everybody happy. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, somebody, somewhere, some group is gonna be offended or upset by what you said or did, or both. But like the fact that black girls feel like when we're in interracial relationships, we have to brace for this hate because we know it's coming. And yeah, it does come. I just choose to ignore it now. And like not for nothing, the main people who will be bashing us or judging us or saying that we don't love ourselves, we hate ourselves, we seek validation, notoriously, and I'm again, I'm not trying to say it's all of y'all, but it's a lot of black men. To the black men who trash talk black women, why? I mean really why? Do you not love our people? Or is there some self-hate going on? The most judgment we as black women get when we date outside our race comes from black men. You've seen these videos on TikTok in particular that piss me off. Like I don't understand how we as black women are supposed to deal with the constant bashing we get from black men who again feel the need to be so vocal about why they don't want to be with us. We're loud, we're ghetto, we're ratchet, uneducated, dumb, bitches, bossy, whatever. But then when we do date outside our race, we get the hate for that too. Like, don't nobody want y'all. Oh, you only want them because we don't want you. What? Can we just live our lives? And again, I know there are black men out there who are like, my black queens, my sisters, we got your back. I know that. I'm not talking about y'all. If this is you, disregard this video. I'm talking about the ones who ain't like you. I I've mentioned this before in past videos, but statistically, overwhelmingly like for example if you meet a biracial person person who's half black and half other sorry i would venture to guess about 94 percent of the time it's the father who's black when you meet someone who's korean and black it's usually the dad who's black when they're black and white it's usually the dad who's black that's just usually how it goes because black women traditionally and typically and overwhelmingly stay within our own race how are we seeking validation when overwhelmingly black women choose to stay with black men Black men are the one who likes to venture outside and, you know, again, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't get why the judgment falls on us and not them. And you do have the black women with the neck rolls and the mm-hmm, lefty for white girl types. I get that. But we aren't so vocal. We don't make these videos about black men seek validation, black men hate themselves, black men have low self-esteem when they date a white woman. Or at least I'm not seeing it, correct me if I'm wrong. And the thing is, when we date outside our race, we're not going out of our way to say why we why we date outside our race, we're just living our fucking lives. I just feel like if we all could just like what we like and not judge other people because we don't understand it or because we disagree, the world would just be a much better place if we could just stay in our own lane and mind our own business. I don't mind talking about this stuff. I like to talk about this stuff because I do like to see other people's point of views. What I don't like is people judging you for having a different point of view, you know what I mean? And then some people are like, oh, she went all the way to London and still found another Asian dude. Yeah, okay. I came all the way to London for an Asian. There's also a lot of people who assume that I moved to Korea to date an Asian man. Like, we don't have Asian men in America. No. <laughs> I moved for an adventure, a job, an opportunity, and an experience. Not no mans. Like, never in a million years would I have ever thought that I'd see a time or a situation where people are offended by what or who you're attracted to. Like, I don't take it offensively if someone says they're not attracted to black women. I'm not gonna be upset by that. And some people, they are. Like, it's actually happened to me a few times where someone said they're not attracted to black women. They've been white, they've been Hispanic, they've been other, they've been black as well. Like, that's actually a common trend I've noticed on dating apps when I was on them. When black men would ask me what my race is or my ethnicity or my background, they always have these weird ways of asking you what you are or what your race is without just saying it. They're like, what's your background? Where are you from? I'm like, you want to know my race? Just ask me that. So these black men, when they would find out that I'm not like biracial or Latina or Indian or whatever they thought I was, they would unmatch me. Somebody, oh, he needs oh. some milk. Go fucking figure. I found it funny more than offensive. Like, oh word, you only like me because you thought I wasn't black or not entirely black or you thought I was exotic and mixed with something else. 
Like for those who haven't seen my 23andMe video, I'm roughly 80% African and 20% European. One of the um, points of views that I've heard is people say that not being attracted to a certain race is considered racism. A lot of black women aren't attracted to white men, but I don't think that makes us racist. And if she says she's not attracted to Asian men or white men, I don't think that makes her racist. For me, racism means like you you think your race is better than another race or you mistreat someone because of their race. I don't think not being attracted to them is racist. I think that's just, we can't control or help what we're attracted to or who we're attracted to or what we find attractive. You have girls who keep finding bad boys attractive and they hate themselves for it because they can't control it. That's just my point of view. Again, I'm not trying to say that if you see things differently, you're wrong. That's just how I see it. I don't think you're racist if you don't find another race attractive. I think you're racist if you mistreat someone because of their race, if you think you're better than someone because of their race, or you disrespect or discriminate against someone because of their race. I've said this a few times, most white men I don't find attractive, but I don't think I'm racist. You know, there are a few, there's the Chris Evans of the world, or as TikTok has dubbed him, Christopher Jamal Evans. <laughs> What's something that isn't black, but feels black to you? So I figure now, being in a relationship with an Asian man, felt a little more relevant to kind of give a part two or an update or another rant about this. Most of the comments and most of the people who, you know, know about my relationship are happy and supportive, but you do have the people like, oh sis, you need to love yourself more. And even one of my close friends, I'm, I know she didn't mean anything bad by it. That's why I'm not mad if I what she said, because again, friends can have differing views and different opinions. She called me, found out about my boyfriend, and she said, I'm still holding on to the hope that you'll marry a black man. And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, you need some more melanin in your life. I was like, girl, I'm black. My whole family's black. And like 92% of my friends are black. I need to diversify my relationships. <laughs> so thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Annyeong.